How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech and also to another tech news video where I go over all of the latest news that happen in the tech world. We go into the topics a lot quicker so we don't bore you guys for a half an hour. So I hope you guys do enjoy these tech news videos. But of course, all of the topics will be linked in the video description as well if you want to read through that. But anyway, starting off with our first topic. As you all know, we have been talking about the Steam Deck for quite a while now and some reviews have been released. Well, now we can quickly talk about some of the features and how the people actually ex have experienced it so far. So first things are first, what can you really expect from a 40 watt hour battery? Well, it depends on probably what games you play and also on the settings and also your screen of brightness. Now we have seen some reviewers state that they have got anything between 45 minutes and 6 hours. That 45 minutes is quite a bit low. But now all of that depends on the games they play, the brightness of their screen and also the frame rate they play. Yet. Now the gaming performance doesn't seem to be that bad either. Now on control on a native resolution it got around 36 fps. In a ghost runner it got around a 40 fps with RTX on and 60 fps with it off. And then for Forza Horizon 5 it ranged between a 40 to 60 fps depending on the graphic settings. Now the screen of brightness seems to be a more than sufficient as well depending in which area you play outside inside and so on. So it's a pretty decent but that does seem to come with a price as a lot of people does state that it does get a bit heavy for a long gaming sessions and also the fan noise is apparently also quite a bad but it does keep the handle from overheating so that's at least a good so it does seem like the steam deck is a quite little handy machine if you want to go handle a gaming i kind of just wish that we were able to get our hands on one year in south africa but Hopefully later on in the future, we will be able to, but I'm not keeping my hopes up just yet. And then next up, I think of getting one of the rumored 40 series NVIDIA GPUs that's apparently coming out at the end of September this year. Well, you might need to upgrade your power supply then as well. These cards are said to consume over 450 watts and some rumors suggest that it might even go up to 800 watts a TDP for the 4090. Now these GPUs are said to use the AD102 GPU and apparently the previous rumors suggest that the AD102 might feature as many as 18,432 CUDA cores. But such a configuration might might not be immediately available for consumer GPUs if they are even planning to actually bring them out. Now, of course, the AD102 chips are more for the higher end systems like you're going to get in the 4080 and the 4090, not necessarily the lower end GPUs. Those ones will probably use a bit less power, but we already saw with the 3050 even using like a, more than 100 watts, which is just bonkers, really. And then uh, next up, the hackers got hacked. A nice little topic to go over here. Now, a group called Lapus, L-A-P-U-S, apparently hacked in a video and stole over one terabyte worth of data, some of it containing employees' email addresses. Well, apparently, NVIDIA hacked them back and ransomed the hackers. Now, unfortunately, the hackers made already a backup of the stolen data, but they were at least able to do that. This also explains why NVIDIA's email emails have been unresponsive in the last few days. Now the funny thing is the hackers are a bit delusional here stating that NVIDIA is the criminals for hacking them with ransomware. So uh, it's probably against the law, I'm not exactly sure, but uh, it's just a sweet, sweet revenge I would say for NVIDIA. <laughs> they still lost their data, but at least they got a bit payback for the hackers. So. I'm glad. And then uh, next up, Apple might take us uh, back into the past. So they have uh, filed a patent to build a Mac into a keyboard. Now, Apple has filed a lot of patents and it doesn't necessarily mean that we actually see a final product, but it does uh, give an idea of what they might uh, plan for future products. Now, this is also a very cool idea for someone that works in a different locations or maybe from home and then just 
pack up their keyboard Mac and then also take it along with them to like the office or wherever. Now, of course, you will need an external display for that, but it's still pretty cool. You might still say that you can just use a laptop then instead, but I still like it. It's something different at least. Now, it's something that was actually implemented way back in and the 80s, way back, yes, and it was already featured in the Commodore 64 and also the St. Clair ZX Spectrum. So we all know what's going on in Ukraine at the moment and our prayers go out to everybody there. It's honestly horrible, but now at least there might be some Good news necessarily, depending on which area you're in. So Intel and AMD has suspended chip shipments to Russia. Intel has also told their branch in China to hold all shipments to Russia as well. Now this goes in line with the sanctions drawn up against Russia for the attack in a Ukra on Ukraine. And I personally don't know what type of impact this will really have on Russia, necessarily the government, but for the consumers, it might not also necessarily be that big, but I mean, there are gamers there are people who need systems laptops and all of that so it might impact the normal people a lot more than actually the people who are making the decisions so and we already see that they don't really care about about their own people arresting them if they protest so not sure exactly what's going to happen. But also since a TSMSC is also uses a US region equipment to manufacture semiconductors, TSMC might also stop shipping to Russia. So it's honestly just a mess. Not sure how it's going to turn out. It's it's just a bad thing after bad thing after bad thing looks like. But again, hopefully it blows over soon and things can get back to normal and the people both normal people both in russia and also people in ukraine can get back to their normal lives all right and then uh, next up this one oh, might get a bit hot so the pentagon has stated that gen z or the nintendo generation i'd rather say the boomers was kind of the nintendo generation because then Nintendo was really, really big, but still, we can go on. Uh, they say that, uh, that the Nintendo generation is too weak to join the military. Now, a clinical coordinator and a chief of the medical readiness service line stated that the Nintendo generation soldier's skeleton is not toughened by activity prior to arrival. So some of them break more easily. She also said that we see injuries ranging from acute fractures and falls to tears in the ACL to muscle strains and stress of fractures with the overwhelming majority of injuries related to overuse. These occur mostly in the lower extremities. Now statistically, females tend to have a higher indice for injuries than their male counterparts. This is also apparently due to the fact that Gen Z spend too much time on the couch. <laughs> so I'm not gonna say anything. I wouldn't survive in the military. My knees are horrible. I'm not fit at all. So I'm just gonna stay out of it. I'm still relatively young, I feel, but I mean, I wouldn't survive and a lot of people that I know would also not necessarily survive. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Now, one thing that the Stream Deck does not have right now is a Microsoft Game Pass. That's because it doesn't run on Windows, of course. It runs on the Steam OS, which is Linux based. But that might change sometimes in the far future. Gabe Newman, the Valve founder, said in one of his interviews on the Steam Deck that the Game Pass could come to Steam platforms if a Microsoft wanted to, which they probably will later on. Now, Valve isn't planning on creating their own subscription based platform on a Steam, which is a good thing, but something like the Game Pass would actually be a nice to feature on Steam, as Microsoft's launcher on a PC really sucks for gamers. And then next up, Intel is bringing the muscle to laptops, it seems, as the new Elder Lake HX range CPUs are rumored to have 16 cores. This will consist of 8 performance cores and 8 efficient cores, which will put them head-to-head -head with the new 6000 series CPUs from AMD. The HX range will have a TDP of between 45 to 55 watts and will only consist of a single SKU. 
That's so far all we know. Elon Musk to the rescue. <laughs> Ukraine has uh, thanked Elon for enabling Starlink in Ukraine as their internet has been cut off by Russia. Now, Elon Musk enabled Starlink for Ukrainians after the Ukraine vice prime minister said, while you try to colonize Mars, Russia tries to occupy Ukraine. While your rockets successfully land from a space, Russian rockets attack Ukraine's civilian people. We ask you to provide Ukraine with Starlink stations and to address race a sane Russians to stand. Now again, no arguing that what's happening in Ukraine is horrible, but at least the technology from Starlink is able to help them in some way at least. Of course, it will take a while for them to get off the Starlink units, but at least there is options. And this is just great to see that if land-based internet is cut off by a foreign enemy, that at least you can still be able to get internet from satellites. So I uh, just good thing all around from, from Starlink. And I actually really, really want to have it here in South Africa, but it just doesn't want to come here. So that sucks. But anyway, <laughs> and then lastly, as we haven't suffered enough with a miner stealing all of our gaming controller with our GPUs and with their greed, now Biostar has a fallen for the same greed. Now, if you don't know Biostar, they are one of the larger rare GPU and also motherboard manufacturers, uh, not as big as the, let's say, big three or big four, uh, but uh, they do produce quite a bit. Now getting back, Biostar has been advertising complete mining rigged aligned with eight RX 580s. This while also saying they can guarantee availability in a large quantities. Now we all know that AMD and Nvidia have been uh, trying to <laughs> get GPUs into gamers hands instead of miners, but realistically it doesn't really make that much sense as miners do buy a lot more GPUs in one shot than most gamers do. So business-wise, it just makes sense to actually make more money that way, which is unfortunate. Just remembering off the top of my head as well, I can't remember exactly which brand it was, but it was an uh, AMD uh, reseller brand. It was actually all, all of their cars that was produced in China actually was sold to miners. Not a single one went to actual gamers. So there's just constant demand from the miners to get the gpus and if you can sell everything one shot without needing even to go to retail stores or whatever then it's just easier for them it's sad again but from a business standpoint i understand now again although this is horrible at least it's only rx 580s and not a 6000 series gpus from amd or 30 series rtx cards from nvidia so it's at least some some good news <laughs> But we all know that those are also going towards miners even. So yeah, it's a, it's a messed up world, unfortunately. But anyway, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like, subscribe, and comment. Like always, again, all of the topics will be linked in the video description if you want to check that out. And I want to check all of you guys again on a Wednesday for another tech news video. Cheers, guys.